So as I'm doing this build that's so one-off, I believe the only one in the world, there's a lot of questions about how I'm going to be monitoring everything. For example, the Tremec T56, the speed sensor, is an electric output. My speedometer in the Accord is a mechanical speedometer. So how are we gonna work electric output to mechanical input? And there's all of these questions. In Holly Performance, they're gonna be the solution to all of those issues. And now, you're watching If You Think I'm Afraid of a Murder Hornet You Never Met My Ex channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another video. So this video, we are going to be focusing on the dash. And more specifically, we have, let me just open this thing up. So we have right here, the Holly 6.8 inch digital dash. And this is the Pro model. And this is going to be perfect for the car. So just opening the box, we have some directions right here. This is for if you're going to be surface mounting it or flush mounting it. We will get into that a little bit later. Now coming back, looking at the box, packaged really nicely. And this, this is the display right here. So this is the Pro, like I said. So there's LEDs up here. It has this little protective film over it. We're gonna leave that on as we're going through with the install process. And also back here, this is a little input for a GPS speedometer, so that's gonna answer that issue. There's no issue for that. And this is gonna plug perfectly into, and this is gonna plug right into where my Holly Terminator is. And then there's a bunch of other stuff, directions with it, all kinds of hookups. This, I believe, is actually the GPS speedometer unit. And then there's different things, just different connections. And then the software is on here. And what else would you expect from Holly except having everything packaged really nicely, mounting hardware. And then this, I believe, goes from the back right there. This just plugs in just like that. And then this is going to talk with my Holly Terminator. So everything's gonna be really nice. And in this video, I wanna focus on getting this into my gauge cluster. So getting back to the directions, this is going to make it perfect and we wanna go with the flush mount. So that's the exact size that this is for this lip to just barely hang over onto something just like that. So that's easy, that's all there and that's mapped out for us. But what we have here, we have to figure out how to make my cluster come apart. And what I think I wanna do is just have the gauges gone completely and just have a black piece of ABS plastic back there, a little textured piece that I already ordered. Man, it's crazy, this cluster has a 55 on it marked out. But anyways, so I'm gonna get this cluster pulled apart and then we'll try to figure out how we're gonna get that black piece of plastic back there. Once we get that figured out, then we can move on to this. So with taking apart a gauge cluster, Civics, Integros, they're all the same. What we wanna focus on is getting these black tabs out from behind there this one behind there and working our way all the way around and then this back area should separate and I want to make sure that all these connections are out as well. A little light window right there maybe we'll use that for something. I'm just gonna put the screws back. So we might be using this might not be maybe just the housing because there's these little light bulbs in here so we'll see how that goes. We'll put that aside for now. Now I'm just gonna go around, work my way around the entire thing, pushing out those tabs. Once you get the top ones, the bottom ones will pop out. That's about it. This piece from the stock cluster, I'll have to put this up in the shop somewhere, pretty cool. But we're not gonna be using any of this. This is all that I'm after. And if you can see this surface right here, I wanna build a piece of plastic that has this perfect size. And then I'll just put some through bolts right here that are gonna come all the way through and that's gonna hold that on. So now we gotta get this somehow into there and it's gotta be centered because the idea is in the end, I want it to look something like this. And man, that's that's the perfect size. I mean, that looks, that looks phenomenal. So now just looking at this, this is actually going to be my template. So if you can see that fits perfectly in there because it was built for it, obviously. So we wanna use this outer edge and transfer it onto here. And this is actually the black plastic that I bought. It's just textured eighth inch. And if I think that eighth inch is a little bit thin, we might reinforce it with something else. But either way, I want you to see this textured side. So I'm gonna go ahead, and put this tape down so that way it's easier to trace. So 
So that's our shape right there. Perfect size for that to fit in there. And then after the fact, we'll throw the template on there and that's, that's all we need. And also I might be using this plastic for some other stuff as well. That's why I bought a little bit extra, but this sheet, 20 bucks. All right, so as you can see, that's kind of how it's gonna look now. It's the easy part. I mean, both of them was really the easy part because we had, this was the template for the outside. This is the template for the actual cluster itself. And that, I mean, nothing's holding it on. I mean, that's a tight fit, looks really good. So now we just gotta transfer this onto there. So that way, so that way this can flush mount on the back. So this is easy, this is a quick install. Now this template is actually the exact size and it's not perfectly symmetrical. There's one little thing on the side and that side is just to get by this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out and then we'll place it on here and then draw that out. You understand where this is going. So what I want to do now, since I want to make this centered, I'm going to find the center point of this piece and then find the center point of this piece and then get those lined up. And then if I measure from the edge to the outside, then the edge to the outside, those two numbers should be the same. So I'm going to do that for left and right and for top to bottom. Then we're going to find the exact center. And then if I want to move it up a little bit or down a little bit, I can. But either way, I think the most important thing is that it's centered left and right. Because also we have this little piece that I don't think it's going to affect anything. We'll just, we'll just have to see. Either way, it's gonna look good. So seven and nine sixteenths, mm -hmm. three and three quarters, and then just go barely a little bit bigger, right? Three and three quarters, and then go a sixteenth more or whatever, right? So now we have it mapped out. So now I just gotta make a hole on each of the four corners, and I'm just gonna use a three eighths hole. So I have my step it right here, and then where it says three eighths, I just like to black this off so that way it's easy to see. So once that black becomes all the way through, I know I can stop and then I'll just wipe this down with some acetone, put a little bit more oil on it and then do it again the next time. That's how I like to use step bits. So now the way that this is set up, this will never fall through the back because it's lipped over. So now I gotta make something for the front. So I just got these whipped up. This is just some metal that I had laying around. And what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be something like that. And we also have hardware that was provided by Holly for the kit. So those are gonna go into these holes. That's gonna be like that. Then we're gonna have a 90 off and then another 90 or so over just to kind of keep some pressure on it. So that way this can't go forward or backwards. So I'm gonna get these bent up, drilled out, and then put on. Now that we have all four of these, and like I said, this is just metal that was sitting around real quickly, and I also rounded off the edges a little bit so that way it'd look kind of nice. So if you can see how that looks, and the idea is if you make them a little bit taller, it's actually gonna tighten down and put tension on there, and that's exactly what we want. And also I made it nice and tight. It's actually tighter than a 90 and a 90, just so that way it can push right on this corner. So those are all gonna be like that. So you get the idea, that all looks good. 
and you're not gonna see any of that from the front. That's all behind there. So that's gonna be nice. Tension on the front, tension on the back. So before we do that for the final time, I wanna go ahead and put two holes here, two holes there, and then those two holes on each side are gonna go through this. So just one, two, three, four. That's gonna hold this together. So everything is gonna be nice and solid and it's gonna look really good. Now that it's together for the first time, I didn't take the plastic off, but it's gonna be in and out a couple more times, especially with us dealing with wiring and doing all that stuff. And that's all gonna be further on down the road once the motor's actually in the car, once we get it fired up again, cause keep in mind, their motor already ran before we built it, but we'll get into that later. So it looks really good. As you can see, super nice, kinda glared out. So what I wanna do now is I wanna actually put this in the dash just to kind of get an idea of how it's going to be and you got to do little things like this along the way so that way you can keep the end product in mind or that vision in mind. Dude, that looks so good and now it's actually been it's been a little while I've just been kind of cleaning up messing around I actually did pull the plastic off the front cleaned up the little screen just a little bit now I know this is touchscreen I might get rid of the actual cover or I might just run a mouse off of it because you can put a mouse in the back and then I'll have a little mouse down by the shifter or even a smart pad well, we can figure all of that out later don't worry about that now now it would be a disservice to you watching this video if i didn't at least power the dash up so what we have right here is i just have a little 12 volt power supply I'm just gonna plug that right in there we go now I know it's hard to see with the way the lighting is and everything, but dude, that looks, that looks phenomenal. Now, I was looking through the directions and talking to Holly about it. There's all kinds of different things that I could do with the dash. There's all kinds of parameters that I can set up for different lights to come on. That also has the LED light bar across the top and I think you can set that for RPMs or warning lights or maybe even signals or whatever. You can do all kinds of stuff. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, all of these problems that I had or all of these unknowns that I had with the Accord all of these unknowns that I had with the Accord, for example, how am I gonna monitor my fuel level? That's, that's possible with this unit. You just go ahead in the settings and you create a table and then you just gotta sync it together with whatever kind of a sending unit you're using in your fuel tank. So all of that'll be on there, GPS speedometer, everything and i'm using the holly terminator and that has the entire wire harness the entire ecu so this whole thing by holly i'm not going to have any issues whatsoever in install i was looking through the pamphlet as well and install is going to be a breeze man i think i think now i actually want to take it back out of there and kind of mess with some of the menus So one thing that I do know is I have a lot of messing around to do with that, but it was really cool to get into it, kind of start messing with it, see how I can customize it. Now I have in my mind exactly what I want to do. And one thing that's really cool about the Holly Pro Dash is it's capacitive touch, not resistive touch. So it's a really high quality screen. It feels just like your iPhone as opposed to a cheap touch screen that you used to see when you're at the pharmacy or something. It's just overall a high quality piece of equipment. So this install was pretty simple for me and I know it would be simple for you as well with the template that Holly 
Holly provided and then just using the actual gauge cluster piece as a template. It was very straightforward. I didn't have to do any figuring out at all. And it was a good one. Nice relaxing video coming up on the car. We just have to keep chipping away at it. And before we know it, this thing is going to be on the road. So huge shout out to Holly Performance for making a quality product, helping me out with the build. I really appreciate that. Just making everything plug and play. I mean, what more could you ask for? So I think that's gonna be it for this one, you guys. Like this video, comment, subscribe, check out the merch, do all the stuff. Man, I'm hyped for this. Quality product, I'm out.